Um, I thought we may split the, the time and kind of talk about a little bit about the book itself. Um, I kind of think that I potentially know what people are gonna think about the book. I may be wrong. Um, and then move into just some topics that the book touch on. And, and usually there may be questions <clears throat> around like, is it true, is it not true? and stuff around those lines. And uh, we have an actual rabbi here, so he can help us <laughs> answer any questions. Um, oh, please open this. Oh, there's, okay. Um, I will start with my very quick um, assessment, but I wanna hear you guys more than anything. I don't think this is a good book. <laughs> I'm gonna start with that. I think it has a few interesting, uniqueness it's a feel good story um i read it for the second time for the book club and it's quick and it's predictable and and you ended up like feeling good kind of i guess at the end um i like i couldn't find and i'm very curious to, to hear what uh ravi solish has to say i couldn't find not one thing that was not correct in term the research was done about the orthodox life so i think um even though it's a very specific community that i'm not a part of it's hard so i'm kind of also an outsider but at least anything that touched on Allah and actual jewish law to me was 100 percent accurate so that i think is interesting we've all read different books in which you read and half is not true and it's like why it's unnecessary. You have so much that it's true. And last, I thought it was like a little bit different than all the news stories that we have either on like Netflix and TV or books, which are people leaving for the right reasons, in my opinion. <laughs> um, in this case is someone like trying to, that found mm -hmm. like got emptiness outside in the secular world and kind of shift inside which is a little bit more unheard of i think um in terms of writing so um that's most of what i wanted to bring up before going into the book itself and i would love to hear you guys if you enjoy reading it it was a good or bad experience and just a little bit of everything i don't know do you want to start here mm. china <sighs> well i put was... in pressure <laughs> no yeah i was a little frustrated because it was so like there's no way that I was I would be attracted to this community between the matchmakers and then the gossip uh -huh. uh, and the gossip they kept bringing it up throughout the whole book and right. it was really annoying like is it really that bad is right. it really that way it's it was really a negative portrayal right. of whatever uh, sect uh, this was. And of right. course, if she had decided to go into Chabad, there wouldn't be a story like this, because I know right. it's not that right. rigid and Yeah, so uh, I, about, awful. That, that's, that's a very interesting, those are the two things that bother you the most about the community, right? Is the gossip and the fact that she was like almost tainted from her past or something along those lines. Yeah, well, the the whole matchmaking system. Right, right. Um, And everybody had, it was levels of people that would be um, acceptable. Right. Um, and one little thing at the, at, that bothered me at the end, like, why wouldn't she tell her mother how to dress? I guess she did, that's part of right, her relationship right, with her right. mother. But like, why let her mother go and and, right. and be subjected? Um, you can or or here maybe, maybe right over here. And, um, no, so, you can say yeah. like we will. Okay, yeah, we'll. Hi. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So. Um, okay, that's just. We're just talking about mind. like first, just general impressions. Okay. impressions of the book. Do you want to go next, and then we go online? Um, okay, so I'll, can you guys hear me online? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, my impressions were um, 
you know, it's I kind of have a, like a little bit mixed feelings on it. Like, um, I feel that it was a little predictable on some level. It's like you kind of knew where it was going to go. Like, mm-hmm. you know, girl who's the outsider, guy who's the insider. They end up like, kind of sort of a little predictable like that. So I wasn't like completely captivated by the plot. It didn't like I like books, like fiction books that take me like totally into a world. And although if I think it presented, when we'll talk about this, like a, a lot of interesting pieces of the world, I didn't feel like it was like so richly composed. So like mm-hmm. the writing itself, that's yeah. one piece of it. But I, yeah. I thought it was interesting. I thought they did a pretty compelling job portraying the incredible benefits of that type of com- community, as well as the, I would call them almost inherent drawbacks. It's almost like, the literal other side of the coin. Right. You have like a strong community that will take care of you, but they know your business. So like, you're not going to have it. It's like, you don't want, you don't want anyone in your business. Right. Great. But then you don't know who your neighbor is. And then if something happens, no one to call. So like you, you, you it's, I think I'm getting a little too deep, but I, I feel like no, I no, liked, no, sure. um, I liked those types of insights. Mm-hmm. I thought she did a great job. I could tell. The research that she, was. She was, I, I could tell. So here's a quick awkward. insight. I could tell that she wasn't from this community, that she's not from this community, but she did like 98%. Right. I, I, because she yes. writes about, I, I'll tell you, like a little clue was she writes about glatt kosher chocolate that doesn't exist. Right. I, <laughs> glatt like kosher, glatt, yeah. glatt kosher, glatt is for meat, right. for, it's for beef. <laughs> right. Only thing that's Even glatt is- Even when they is, say like chicken, glatt, it's like, it, it's already- right. Glatt is only for beef. Glatt yeah. does not exist. In any other context, other glatt literally means smooth, and it's a reference to the lungs in a behema, in an actual cow or steer or ram, or like it's only in animal. It's right. only beef. So glatt, it's like she's trying to express how super kosher was, like glatt kosher <laughs> chocolate, and I'm like, you almost got like you were like oh, well, almost got, but she, but someone who didn't come from the community, yeah. what she did get right was actually amazing. Right, so right. I feel a little bit. So my overall impression is, I like. Uh, you know, was I drawn and captivated? Not exactly. Was it interesting? Yes. Was I interested in like that? I find like elements of it and like the room kind of like the like the, the background of it compelling. Yes, I did find a lot of that fascinating. Awesome. Let's. Um, I don't know. Patty. Yeah. Let's. You want to say something to begin with, or should we pause it online? Whatever you guys want. Okay. All right, let's 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 because we did some here we did some there. All right, okay. um, who's gonna go first? Eve, you want to jump in? Yeah, I actually oh. will. So I, I I thought it was a fun read. Um, you know, I very easy to guess the ending. Um, kind of a superficial book. I mean, not a wonderful work of literature by any means. From my experience, um, which is limited actually to a very religious community in Jerusalem, it, it, it's quite accurate. I mean, in terms of who gets paired with whom. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I thought that was very interesting and it kind of um, cemented what our experience had been with an extremely close relative who, as someone who wasn't from a from, from birth family, was only paired with certain kinds of people and that kind of stuff. And that was very interesting. I think it also did a very good job portraying what's incredibly wonderful about that kind of life, but what also is a bit of a drawback, which isn't just necessarily in a from community. It's a, like, a lot like that on a Moshav in Israel. You know, you have, as you said, Rabbi Silla, she, your neighbors who would do anything for you, but they also know your business and somewhat control your life. So uh, again, I thought it was pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, Adina Malka. Well, I couldn't find anything that was appealing about that community, not even one. I just thought it was horrible. And um, I felt bad about that little girl, Chandra. She was suffered so much from all this adult, you know, um, you know, a marriage, you know, oh, and with, you know, finding a, a spouse or somebody, that girl just suffered terribly, terribly with all the housework and missing school. And 
uh, she had all, you know, all this uh, ostracism at school. And she was the one who really suffered from all this, these terrible rules and laws. And uh, I, I didn't like it at all. And I felt very bad about that little girl, how she suffered. What about the book? Besides, like outside of your perception of the community, did you enjoy the reading or not? Well, I enjoyed it because it was all new information to me. Mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, maybe they were going to get together, but the cost, the human cost, mm -hmm. right? As uh, you know, you know, is uh, demonstrated in, the, in that little girl. She bore the brunt of all that prejudice and, uh, uh, you know, keeping up appearances, and it was uh, it was upsetting to me. Yep. Steve, any comments on the book? Oh, well, I'll just start with Shandel. I, I felt very sorry for her, but it was very predictable. Um, you know, she was wanted to be the woman of the house and rise to the occasion, but she was a child. So it was predictable. But fortunately, Leah was a very intelligent woman. And over time, I think, uh, you know, won, won her over and gave this, you know, deserving Shandel, you know, a life. But um, I, I thought it was a very good book because, A, it was a fast read. If I had much more time involved, I might not have feel that way. But the, first, the, the beginning, of course, was, you know, matchmaker, he's looking for a shit off. She is, you know, it's not working. The shock there was that Shahin, Shahin, the matches they were making, if that's their profession, it would be like a doctor, you know, saying you have measles when you have chicken pox. You know, that, that was... Uh, uh, amazing. But then going on, I love toward the end where he goes to it to his buddy, uh, Meyer, that mm -hmm. uh, Yashiva, I can't remember if it was a Shiva or, uh, or in uh, business school, but he went to him and basically he made the Shidduch and, and then they went to uh, uh, Rebetzin uh, Basha and she became like the spin doctor. Mm -hmm. So I really liked that. And I think it was very real because I wouldn't be surprised if there was a very high percentage of marriages where, you know, you put a spin on it. Not, not every man is perfect, not every woman's perfect, but these two, um, you know, they wound up to be a perfect match. So uh, I, I thought it was a good, good book, enjoyable. Yeah, and right, I, you touch in part of the, the human elements of it of, of, of like, yeah, I agree. Um, you hear any initial reactions that anyone wants to share? Patty, what do you think? Um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I think I, I said the first time I was here, um, I've been attending Chabad services for the past eight or nine years now, but I'm not Jewish. Um, and so um, I've, I've learned a lot over the past eight years, but obviously not a lot about the marriage and all that, those pieces of it. And so that was really interesting for me. And, um, you know, it's, it's too bad the author, you know, who did so much research didn't have somebody from Chabad or somebody read it, some Orthodox person read it prior to publishing it. Because the few things that you guys have mentioned that were not quite yeah. right, I think like someone could have, would have made it, right. it would have made it that much yeah. stronger. Um, the ending was definitely predictable, <laughs> um, but, you know, the ending for all small communities, as a person who has lived in the military and lived in small communities, um, I live in Peachtree City, it's not that different anywhere. I mean, there's, there's no more person. because of the Jewish laws and rules, um, you know, people obviously date differently outside right. of the um, Orthodox Jewish faith. But they're still trying to keep up with the Joneses and trying to mm -hmm. um, do what other people, you know, are doing. Um, it was interesting, her exploration, at, and I guess I find this really true as the more I attend services and stay and, and connect to Jewish people, 
is that Jewish people do kind of find their way back in very interesting ways. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, I, I, I was curious about coming here and finding out how accurate that was because mm -hmm. almost everybody I know who's converted or had Judaism and left Judaism and came back, it was just a very circuitous route. And, um, and I, you know, as a person who has chosen not to convert um, for a lot of different reasons, but I'm compelled still to come and attend regularly to services to, um, uh, you know, major things. Um, I that that intrigued me the most. Ariella, could you turn the so we? Can yes, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apologies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah. Hi, Hi Sandrine. <laughs> hey. Hi. I, I think you're making a very interesting point about yeah. There's a lot of there's there's a lot of that type of journey, you know. We have one generation that's in, next generation is out, yep. next generation back in. Right. Yep. And you do have that. And that yeah. So I think there was something comforting for me as as the book goes on to see. I mean, before we we go into the kind of conversation whether it was accurate or not. Again, I don't think you or I are part of, of that specific community, but still we can give a pretty decent representation. Yeah. Um, like the book itself, um, when it was a little bit comforting to me when at some point you learn that both Jacob, which was revealed at the beginning, but also Leah had a loss. Like they lost, I mean, one was married with kids, the other one engaged, but that that similar process of going through losing someone really important in your life. And um, when they go back to the way she kind of found religion through their class and with a priest or not Jewish leader that kind of challenged her, it was one line that I thought was very interesting and one I read. And um, I would love your opinion, guys. I don't know. I was thinking a lot about it. With or without religion, you would have good people doing good things and evil people doing evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. Uh, <laughs> that was that. That was said as someone challenging right. the teacher or whoever does the teacher right. was. Um, I don't know why I went back and back. It's a real quote from a real like philosopher or whatever. Um, but he, he, he kind of linked to the, to the story of who she found in the community to me, which is people knew there was a good way to act. They all knew that you shouldn't be judgmental. They all knew that gossip was the wrong thing to do. But for the sake of religion, they were doing it anyways. Mm -hmm. it, it was like against it and for it at the same time. Um, and I think sometimes we hide behind those things. And it was really well explained in the book, I thought. It's like, I wouldn't gossip, but it's a, in this case, it's a mitzvah. It's a myth, because I, right? uh, I mean, otherwise, uh, <laughs> right. you know, this, this little girl is never going to get married right, if, if her right. father is dating this girl. If she comes, not even dating, if she comes over for Shabbos. Exactly. Right, it's going to be a shanda. Oh my gosh. This, <laughs> this Leah comes over to the house. Her chances are done. Right. So of course, we're all going to talk about it and all going to, you know, create this thing because it's to save. Kids to save. on the school where like mm. we need a, and I think it's such a human quality, which is like, I want to behave in a certain way. Let me just find an explanation for it. Mm -hmm. But- um, Let me cloak it in a halo. Right, Put exactly. It, make, it, make it holy. Exactly. Wouldn't the mother's suicide have been as much of a taint on the girl as the fact that her father was marrying Leia? Um, the, yeah. So I would say that I think the portrait of the Orthodox community in this book was a 20 years old portrait of the Orthodox community. Not that <laughs> it's not relevant. I think um, in most communities, probably not all, there has been a huge awareness on mental health. Um, you would right, but 20 years ago, there was So you won't disagree. Yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Um, so I think 
right. I think 20 years ago it would have been exactly like that. Any mental illness was like almost like a stamp that there was less awareness, less understanding, less also understanding of how common it is. Like whether it's someone actually is already in therapy or taking care of it or not, chances of it becoming an issue in your 50, 80, 70, 80 years of marriage, you know? So, um, but a lot of the things of the community, it sounds to me to be representative of 20 years ago. And then I think, yeah, mental health was as secretive and, and, yeah. and dangerous in a way. Um, I don't know, what do, you, what do you think? I mean, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I think that the, I don't think that this was less prevalent 20 years ago. What I think is that it's when you have people covering up the problems, and then it becomes almost like an agreement, like an unspoken agreement that everyone's going to cover it up, pretend like it doesn't exist. And you have to cover it up and pretend it doesn't exist, even if it's in the same family. Right. Like even if every, it's like it's in our family and your family and your family, like whatever it is, whether it's a, a child with challenges or an adult or it doesn't matter. It could be relationships, could be mental health, emotional health, could be dyslexia, could be any any type of challenge. But like if if the if it's all about like the culture is that we don't put these things out there, right. then who's the first one to put it out there? No, right. no who wants There's to be the no first one to put it out there? Because right. right. it's almost like this, you don't break that, you don't break it. But the problem is no one wins from that. Right. Like no one, it doesn't help anybody to do that. Right. But that's yeah. just, yeah. That's um, just the way it is. But I right. think there is movement now. There's a lot, a lot of organizations now to put the stuff front and center. But with that being said, I don't know that it, that there aren't communities and pockets that are still on more on the, let's not talk about it. Right, I mean, there's yeah. still a, I think a scheme, like it's very easy to talk about anxiety when I think it's 50% of like a crazy number of people suffer anxiety at some point in their lives um, versus suicide, which is a much more, just challenging and completely terribly um i don't know the cross well, religions it's wrong right so it's to being born with down syndrome or dyslexia right right so not but nowadays like even the chat the, the conversation they had like the rabbis did a note to bury her and it, it's, it's it like nowadays i think it's pretty much understood as like a illness like any other illness i, I would i would say <laughs> i i feel like I, I spoke with somebody recently about this but like i don't know how you can say you know, the idea is that suicide is like taking a life so taking a life is wrong whether it's someone else's or one's right. own god forbid right? right but like that's someone is to that place where they're taking their own life i mean that means that they're in extreme pain right and then yes. the question is how much culpability are you holding that person right which right. sounds crazy i would crazy. never th i mean i, I don't i, I, I can't say what right. what the i don't even know what the calculus was right. you know in the past but like i can't even imagine right. how do you even hold someone culpable who's that desperate who's that in pain exactly. at the end, at the end their own life right. like what right. how would you like compound yeah. that with Oh, and you're to, and and now you're held to blame for that, like as if someone just casually did that, like yeah. you know what I mean. Does that make sense? In other words, I'm agreeing with you. Right. No. 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 And I hope that there's an evolution in that area because right. I don't. I can't yeah. imagine yeah. any other way on that. Did, did anyone think? Hold on. Well, let's get Sandrine. Oh. Yeah. Uh, no. Sandrine, jump in. <laughs> no, I was thinking about the, about that. It's not only depression or you know but it's postpartum yeah uh, which yes. is you know in a community with a lot of uh, yeah pregnancies so that's something yeah, to, to be and was also in Stiesel and uh, that's why I was yeah, looking right. at Stiesel when was that book that. written yeah. because yeah. recently you know there was a lot between an orthodox and mm -hmm. Stiesel mm -hmm. and right. uh, so yeah, it was good that it was addressed and uh, yeah, like the book, it was an easy read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, easy read. Um, so, uh, 
yeah, I like to learn more, but you know, it was again a different community than right. Stiesel and then and after the Orgs and then <laughs> so I would like to hear, yeah, and, and sometimes not a very nice uh portrait. Right. Oh, so oh right. page yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Right at the beginning. Yeah. Say, oh, yeah. I tried Chabad, but nah, it wasn't for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I'm right. yeah, I'm like, <laughs> what's wrong with Chabad? <laughs> we're so right. nice welcome. It, like, uh, it was too open. It was too, like, she needed more structure. Right. I think. Yeah. Right. It's not for everybody. <laughs> but <laughs> so it's funny. Um, did anyone feel it? Any of the characters was a like the bad person? Like, did you feel it with the mother-in-law or the daughter, or it was more of the system itself failing? Um, how who, usually when we read books, we attribute like the bad things happening either to a character or to something. D did anyone have that experience of of okay, here I put my negative feelings towards or or not? I'm gonna move it a little bit so we have at least two people on the screen. <laughs> yeah. I don't need to be on YouTube. <laughs> I saw that we Ar Ariella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can we go go back to something? We were talking about mental illness, and of course that does create a problem. But um I we had a family secret. My grandmother died in 1939. Okay. My mother had just turned 15. And no one was allowed to say that she died of cancer until several years after my mother married. You know, so it isn't just mental illness. If you go back in recent history, even something like cancer was a shunned yeah. in the family and yeah. you kept it quiet. Yeah. yeah. Well, even today, you know, like in Judaism, there's the some kind of a blood bank where you can check to see if you have some. Right, you right. Know, it, it's a good thing. So yeah, you don't pass on. Right, right. Things. Yeah, that's for but, genetic illness, especially between yeah. Ashkenazim. Right. We're yeah. we're all cousins, and potentially, um, there is a higher chance of. I think there are like fourteen genetic illness. Mm -hmm. Um, and nowadays there is a lot of awareness about that, especially because you can do testing or mm -hmm. you know and things. Yeah. Yeah, no, but that's interesting. It's almost like you would think an evolution from what it used to be. At some point, the, the mother-in-law or the mother says, like, if it would be cancer, it would be okay. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's interesting because it wasn't. That's what you're saying. Um, yeah. But I think that part was well done, that none of the characters was... The bad guy of the of the yeah. story. Obviously, the mother-in-law had a few situations where you were seriously like you want to make his life even more difficult, or but you always understood what was behind her motivation. So that that was a, a well um, I think accomplished piece of the book is that um, there was not a a single bad guy or good guy and. If anything, are there some things on the system that could have been um, just better? But it turned out at the beginning, gossip and the matchmaking, which I think they're the as like the hardest part to yeah. to understand on the on on the yeah. Well, I'm sort of curious to read the next book to see the evolution of the daughter, because to me she was extremely mm -hmm. self-involved. Now, given, given that she was through a horrible event as a child, right. series of horrible events, but I, I, I'm interested to see how she turns out as an adult. Right. I want to give a little context. Sorry. Okay. I, I want to give a little context because I think like it's important. Sure. And I know it came through in the book, but, I, but I, I, maybe I just want to double down on it. In that community and in many Orthodox communities, the idea of marriage is so vital to identity. And, and I have, it's no different than today, a young girl being obsessed with TikTok or whatever it is, and like getting either excited or depressed or, you know, having mental and emotional health issues. 
because yeah. of what somebody posted or didn't post on social media. And so you have to understand it's, it's something that is at the core of identity, who you marry, and that creates like a status for better or for worse. I mean, like marriage and family is like the most important thing, these communities. And so that's like, that's everything. And so to, 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 for that to be potentially, to that, for that to crumble under your feet is not a small thing. So in other words, like I don't hold her blameless for trying to hold on to whatever she has and do whatever she can. And I think part of it, you know, we can chalk it up to maturity, but I don't know that that's the only thing. It's actually a real thing. And you can mm -hmm. say it's a real problem. It's, an, it, it's like an endemic problem and like it's terrible and it's horrible. But on the other hand, it is about family. So like how horrible is it? Yes, it's horrible that the structure is such that it drives people to, you know, at all costs. But then we live in a capitalistic society that values money and people do anything for money. So does that mean that we shouldn't have capitalism or does it mean that like, People are people. And then it just, it just understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. when you have, you have the value, that's the, that's the, that's the currency. Yeah. The, that's the, the sad currency. part, I think, for the reader is that nothing changed on her. It's like exactly what you say. It's like she's standing on this mountain. She's exactly the same. She hasn't changed, but whatever it's under her crumble, so her status goes down, even though she hasn't yeah. changed. It's nothing, and, and, and half the time, what you're saying is half the time, it has nothing to do with who, what, what kind of person you are. And that's not fair, but that's what it is. If somebody has two people to choose from, right, exactly. to go out with, right. right, a girl, like the same, the girl, same girl, but one has a healthy family, let's say healthy, that sounds judgmental, but like a family that's solid and stable and whatever, versus one whose mother this, whose father that, and whatever it is, it, in that community, there's some red flags. So you're just going to go like in business, you got a resume. So like, you're, how do you choose your resume? You find process of elimination. So she doesn't want it. She doesn't want anything that's going to be a red flag in her resume. Straight up. And it's so important. It's not like, so what's the big deal? Get a career and that's it. You're, you're, it's a community where your identity is around the shit is around because that's the whole, the currency of the community is family. It's a beautiful thing. And I, I don't look at it as like there's pluses and minuses. Like I said before, I literally, it's, this, it's the same, it's the other side of the coin. Oh, the One might even say it's the same side of the coin. It's the same, it's inseparable from the value is the pressure. It's like inseparable, in my opinion. Anyway. Okay, thank you. I have some strong opinions on this, but whatever. It's like, <laughs> Chabad is a little bit, by the way, Chabad is a little bit, has she stayed in Chabad? We're a little bit more uh, easygoing about this stuff. Right, right. Whatever. But in... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's but true. in other communities, it's like very intense. We, we still have questions and I speak for everyone, notice, but you know, about the whole matchmaking thing, yeah. even with Habat. So, yeah, <laughs> it always seems like I have questions and want to okay. know. Let's go uh, to the matchmaking part um, <laughs> in a second, but about the mirror and like the, the 2.0 book, I I, I was missing a little bit of resolution about the, the daughter because I never felt this conversation was enough. Like, mm -hmm. okay, she was told the truth about the mother. Um, I think she, part of the guilt she was given to the father was lifted. That conversation definitely helped the process, but it didn't seem, it, it was like, climax and then too quick down okay we're all happy in and then real life like it, that would only be the beginning of it's other problems she's right. she's yeah terrible. she's still right and and the conversation seemed too simple to actually solve all this pressure that she had uh, to how she would get married or all these things of, of the gossip in the school like it's not that she would come next day to school like if you tell me something, I'm stronger because you know, like so. Um, it's that was a little bit of a just maybe ten extra pages could have done a better. Can I ask and, a question? Yeah, sure. Because she's not Habad. I don't like in Habad. You go away most of the time around twelve or thirteen years oldish kind of thing. So you're in New York, right. it's much less. Well, no, time. you're not going to New York. Right, okay, right, right. Depends, so depends yeah, where you are. around here, town, around, you yeah, around here. Right. So like in my mind it, with kids as a, I'm a former teacher and private tutor, 
kids are amazingly resilient and go through amazingly hard things and bounce back when they're given love and support. And like now that she had this family that had come clean and had said, we made some mistakes and right. we all make mistakes right. kind of thing. Right. Right. I was pretty hopeful. I mean, right. again, it had right. a very happy ending. And so my mind is all about the happy ending right. and she was going to continue that. But had she had to like leave that, that support from her, the person who cared about her and kind of, and, and go off mm -hmm. to a school all by herself and then go back to perhaps more teasing and more right. Right. than I could see her going astray. Um, but, but if, you know, again, I mean, her, her dad particularly was incredibly religious, um, and, and, and not just, not just in, in word, but in, in spirit and, um, and, you know, most, I think most people thrive when they have love. And so she certainly seemed to have that from her family in the end. So yeah. I guess that, that was my big question was like, was she going to be sent off? Cause like she'd already ran away to right. the people in Baltimore and yeah. they didn't know much. Mm -hmm. So um, that would have been part two is if, if she stayed there and had the support and care of the community right. that, yeah. that I could see success. If she was sent away, mm -hmm. maybe not so much. Yeah. Connections on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That, it's huge. Oh. Well, I was just going to say another observation, and it, it kind of is a criticism, but as important as it is, Nikva, it, and I did a search on my Kindle, it was mentioned four times, but really very just as a, it wasn't like in a setting. Um, but it's like really important. Big. You know why? Because she's, she's, big. she's not married. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it was a relevant thing for Leah's life. Yeah. Yes. Oh. But I, I agree. Like it's almost like they're uh, keeping. So uh, is she not converted yet? Or she, she doesn't need to convert. convert. She's uh, Jewish. Was born? Yeah. yeah, she was born Jewish. So there's no need of conversion. Before getting, before the wedding. So before, before the wedding, she, she yeah. would have needed to go to yeah, the, the day. The, the, the night, night, but I don't think it gets all the way there. But they don't even touch much on the topic. Yeah. But um, it's it's not relevant um, in her. Well, maybe stage. in the next book. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the mikvah night, right? Yeah. Yeah. But about um, be a whole other the matchmaking. What what is like the most pressing question? So I think yeah. they almost portray the matchmakers a little bit of an extreme of out of touch. Like, okay. sure, there is, a, okay, you're here. This is a list of people you can date. All of these people, I cannot even recommend it. That part is true, but like an autistic and a, I don't know, 300, like the whole thing mm -hmm. seem a little bit Kirk, like cut to how you say that word like Car caricature right yeah. um so i think that was ex an extreme of mm. of something that is true but like um just that piece of it, it it was like no in reality i don't think that would happen or fly that and many times like people that become religious have their own much making um specific matchmakers that will make them connections with other people that are not just in the edge. They're just went through a similar kind of path to them rather than mm -hmm. like, hey, they're a disaster and I'll date them. Like, again, it may be a community where there are very few Baal to show us, I don't know. But it may be a community which is really rare and, and then it becomes harder mm -hmm. to, but, at least in Chabad, there is, it's almost like a whole entire... It's normalized. It's sure. normalized. Yeah. So oh, I, I have uh, a question yeah. for the group. I mean, who saw the, the community as, as a positive figure in the, in the novel? Interesting. Good question. Well, there was some, uh, you know, I think just like in an orthodox, so in a... Also, like I 
you know, I, uh, for example, it says like here in Borough Park, time didn't pass. It was embraced, celebrated every month with its, with its ritual and reminders of who you were and where you come from and to God to watch over you. Uh, so there's all those, you know, that, that beautiful part of the community right. that cannot be taken away also. And, you know, I think, especially as a Baltic you come with a lot of, with a high expectation. Um, yes, of perfection and, um, and, uh, well, I meant that the characters in the community, like, like the, the matchmakers and the neighbors and the grandmother and the, the, the students who were at um, Chandler's school, I'm just saying like the community did not present itself as, I didn't see themselves presenting them in any kind of a way that was attractive or loving or inviting. It was just such a negative experience for me. Because that's what she she chose to emphasize in the book. Well, that, that's the book. That's what we're talking about. In that book, the matchmakers, um, the students at Chandler School, the grandmother, I'm just saying as a character in the book, the community just was so um, unappealing to me. Just, um, I guess I'm the only one who had that reaction. No, uh, can can I say something, Adina? I I would tend to agree with you because you know when you just made me start thinking throughout this, uh, um, Yaakov, uh, first his the, the bubby was coming over and she was schlepping. You know, she was a worn out old woman. Where were all the other people? You know, like after the shiva, after this, they went their own way. And they knew this man was in yeshiva. He had four children. So I think you have a point. I hadn't thought of it or analyzed it that way, but you do have a point. And then you felt so much shame, you know, that he had to right. drop out of his studies and get yeah. a job in the secular world. I mean, mm -hmm. this was so negative to me. So, so I think I think everyone's making good points. I just want to say one thing. So, um, Sandrine just mentioned um, that I mean the the core of the book is Leia being sent to help out with the family, and that's something that the community kind of provided organically. So that's right. certainly something that's coming from the community. That's yeah. not something and that the, is. I, I think in most cases it wouldn't be one girl. Like I mean, in this case, they that's part of the story, and she was a woman, but. Usually like you could have high Most schoolers people. and each night mm -hmm. they would rotate and and it would be food will take food, be yeah. taken. Like someone, sad story, but as someone's husband in, in New York a few years ago died, she had a meal train for literally till the year, one year of meal train. Every night she would get a meal. And again, this is a different mm -hmm. community, but it's still like part of- I mean, I could speak of, this- yeah, it's it's. I think it, it's also so. I, I it's very interesting to see what is the feeling this community give you. I say like I want to be part of it, or this is terrible. I would never go there. But a, a few pieces of the story were put together just for the sake of the story. Other, I think, are. I think everything is true. Is how emphasized it was in the book, whether it made it negative or positive. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I would say, I would say, I think, I think Ariela's got exactly right. I mean, these are true, these are real elements of a community, but if you don't talk about the positives or don't emphasize the positives, I think she emphasized in the beginning of the book with her mother, when she's speaking to her mother, her mother's like, what are you doing? You're crazy. Right, right. She's like, no, like there's always this, there's that, there's that, there's these benefits, that benefits, so it's clearly there's something there. Um, right. But I'll tell you, just, my, just, just being very honest, like when my grandmother passed away, people would bring my grandfather food. And this went on like every Shabbos or whatever it was for years. It's not like mm. for, for a week. It's, mm. And this is Pittsburgh. And this is not like, mm. I'm telling you, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a reality. It's not a, it's not a theory. It's not maybe this, that it's mm. not, it's not a question. Yeah. This guy's challenge is 
it's in a book. That doesn't mean that it would happen in a community. No, right. Is there gossip? Yes. Do Shad Khanim kind of peg you where you are and they're not even going to suggest because, right. you know, there's it's a waste of time for everybody. Yes. Um, are there bad dates? Sure, there's bad dates in the world also. It's not like Orthodox communities <laughs> are the only ones that have bad dates. Right? It's, uh, you know, right. welcome to Tinder. I mean, it's like no matter what platform you're using, there's going to be bad dates, there's horrible Tinder, dates. Tinder, 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 Tinder. Tinder. Oh, but that's true. So that's, that's not, that's not, that's that's from, he's from a front community, so that's not even, yeah, it's, right. it doesn't work to our favor. No, but the point is, I'm not trying to defend the community. I'm just trying to say that, that you're right. Based on this book, I would say the overall impression is hmm, probably I'd rather not be part of that probably community. not a good community to be a part of. Right, right. right? But but it's it's definitely emphasizing the negative and then still trying to say, yeah. but she persevered through all the judgment, still like kind of that love or that honesty and that truth prevailed despite all the challenges. And those challenges are real, but it's a little bit more balanced. Right. Than that. And, and at some point, so you touched the conversation with the mom. I think it was an evolution in the conversation with the mom as well. They talk at the beginning and it's much more confrontational. And at the end, they talk about it. this letter was misplaced and they have a, they connect at the end again. And um, she's explaining, Les explaining the benefits of the community once again. And they kind of agree that the mom says something along the lines, remember there are still people and, and I think sometimes because we think they're observant or these or that, we should hold people to higher standards. I'm not saying we shouldn't, but we mm -hmm. cannot forget there are also people. And a lot of these things that we see, the mom was like, don't expect this to be perfect. There are also people. And, mm -hmm. and she somehow had a more mature point of view to this reality <laughs> that it's like, people are gonna be people and their motivations. Mm -hmm. um, are gonna play a role, even though we try, and hopefully a community that has a moral standard should be less about their own personal like ego or own personal desires. It's still there, still there present all the time. So I like that kind of transition of like, mom, we need to fight about it. And this is gonna, and till the mom accepting that this is what the daughter wants, but Giving the giving her this warning to to just be remember that people are people no matter where we find them. That's a very good point. I think I found that when like Schissel, you know, I, it's like the reason why I think Schissel resonates because I mean, how many people that that love Schissel are actually part of that community? Right. What makes people resonate with Schissel is like it's a real it's like a real story. Right. It could happen in any community, right. but it's just about that. And, and I think it highlights the humanity of it. Right? It's like these are human beings. That's kind of cool. By the way, just to double down on what I'm saying, before <laughs> Pesach, for example, in Crown Heights and Bar Park and Flatbush, there are trucks that pull up, trucks of food that are available for whoever needs food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, like the There's, Natsa boxes are $30 now a box. Yeah. They're drives in Crown Heights with, with boxes for people. Whoever needs. Whoever it's, needs. it's the chesed. There's a, okay, I'm, I'm pushing this point. So my apologies. There's a there's an organization called Chas De Lev. Mm -hmm. I, I never even knew about it until until this year. It's unbelievable what they do. It's it's complicated how they do it, but it's the 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 giving, the generosity. I don't think there's any group that gives as much tzedakah as Orthodox, whatever word you want to use, Jews. It's it's unbelievable. It, it's the also amount a of Jewish tzedakah. value in general. Yeah. Like if you see among the population and charitable donations done by different um, subset of the society, Jews, whether it's money to university or research or a hospital, like not necessarily to other Jews, but are by far high, higher on right. average every single year. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a value, it's a value. Mm -hmm. And right, so that's, and I think she does a good job telling a little bit more of the good and the bad because the story is the opposite of what we've seen. There is an unorthodox, like my unorthodox life or an orthodox, like all this story, which is people leaving. And I watched those movies and, I, and I'm like, thank God she left. They were in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. or they were like humanity, like, you know, it's like, thank God they're out of there. But in this case, like how much emptiness she was feeling outside and mm -hmm. able to fill it with 
But I also think that regarding that, just a quick comment on that, I think that that, that the problem exists when it's, there's only in or out. If there's no other option. You with me? So then it's like in, they have to be all in. And then if you can't be all in for whatever reason, including trauma, right. then right. then you're all the way out. But as the opposed to if you have, are too, that's, true. that's what I mean. Yes. So when a community is structured where it's like all or nothing, that's when mm-hmm. you actually I think that's what creates the problem. Right. Whereas something like a Chabad community, for example, right. you go to Granites and there's whatever community you want. You can be all in, you could be not all in. There's Chabad light, Chabad whatever. And it's, that's not official terminologies, right. but like it's right. it's very much open. There's Bali Chuva community that are all about, I, I grew up in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a very strong Bali Chuva community where the majority right. of the community are Bali Chuva. And mm-hmm. it's, there's, you know, you don't have a stigma because everybody's Bali Shuvah is like the, the, this woman who was who didn't grow up um, Orthodox who came to Orthodox. Yeah, but so, from the community she's describing, I think it's much less common. Oh, for like sure. Re- like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. What I'm contrasting with is Chabad. I think right. Chabad is a little bit ahead of the curve with right. this yes. because Chabad is more open. Right. But I but doubt. Yeah, I think the problem here is that is no. I'm saying that's I'm saying never. that's the problem. Right. The problem is that it's all like. It's almost all or nothing. Right. And so if you don't fit in, if you're not cookie cutter, exactly. and those, what's, what's Shandel's choice? What's her choice? Right. Her choice is to either care about the system or, and, and conform the and then panic when things are not looking good or say, I don't care about the system, but then what? Where's your place? Right. Then, then you're out. Then you're out. And that's the problem. If, you, if there's only an in or out option yeah. as opposed to a, I'm not going to go with that shock and I'm just going to go with this alternative. But if that it's alternative so doesn't exist, right. but it's still within a thing, but that, they don't have that built out yet, or maybe it's being built out, which I don't know. Then it's yeah, I don't know if it's a, it's a yeah, I don't know how you define cult, but like it's it's more of a very, you know, it's a very insular. close or insular community, which I don't know, whatever. I, it's, yeah, but that's yeah. true. There's no out. There are, non, there are non-Jewish communities like that too, the very strict closed communities, the Hebraites, the Amish. Right, right. And yeah yeah you're right there are communities outside and other places that are also the same right yeah yeah okay yeah and hopefully they're moving towards the right direction of acceptance and keeping their values at the same time right shouldn't be one or the other right you know uh but yeah it's it's a it's a light good read and um i think she did a good job trying to explain a community that it's a little bit different because they they are in, a little bit more in the world you can get a degree you can do this but still with some of the challenges of gossip and and matchmaking i do think the matchmaking part was the less it, every single piece of it was like too extreme Mm -hmm. you know but um there there is definitely okay you're you come from this background all these people is out of the table just because of where you come from but the conversation she had when she goes to the matchmaker like this is how you're gonna dress and it's an extreme like you you have you hear some like real, like a little bit less extreme of like you know it was too much, um, but yeah, um, and I don't know maybe we can talk about next book which um, it's a known author for the, um, the people in this team but I don't know any other final comments on the book before oh, we, we you move. know I have a question about the book club itself like. I would like to know how often we should meet. Is it once a month or once every six weeks? Or um, I would like us to be on a regular schedule. And I was also going to nominate Steve. He totally without even discussing it with them. But Ariella, like if you could make it, maybe Steve could coach you, just so yeah. we could be on like a regular schedule. So you know, we oh, so I'm having, I'm these dates in my calendar and I've missed them because yes yeah, so, the yeah yeah so I'm gonna take responsibility for that we mm-hmm. have before the year started we had dates it's on the website and it's been for me on, on a few occasions some scheduling conflicts which is why 
we've pushed it, but we do have a schedule uh, on, on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. um, but again, just to repeat myself, we haven't been good with that. And I'll, I will take responsibility for that. But as far as like setting that, we kind of did that. Um, uh, the only other thing I could do is I'm trying to make sure we don't have, I don't have conflicts. Huh? It's on the website. It's literally on the website. Like the next two dates that we have are May 15th and June 19th. Okay. Um, the world that we knew by Alice Hoffman is the next one. But but listen, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not specific. I'm saying point very well taken. You want something more consistent. And if we have a date, we should stick to it 100%. Yeah. Point well taken. And uh, yeah, I'm happy. I'm, Steve, I'm happy if you hold me accountable. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, no. You're being nominated by Dina Malka. To, Dina Malka is telling you to, which I'm saying, I'm, I'm totally cool with that. Oh, um, yeah. I <laughs> I'm a little too forgetful and maybe we ought to have like this. Well, we, yeah, I mean, I'm glad to help some, you yeah. know, but yeah. did you just mention the next book? Right. Yes. Yeah, um, what is the next? I, I didn't it, hear that. It's on the it, website. It's on the website. It's called The World That We Knew by Elise Hoffman. Um, it touched on the Holocaust. Um, which was my number one rule before starting the book, book club that I'm not going to do anything related to the Holocaust. So, but this is, I think, a really good book and I'm breaking my own rule <laughs> um, for a book that I think it's going to be in a way enjoyable, but also shows it's a story of, of a very courageous woman. Um, Alyssa Hoffman usually has the main characters, female, very strong um, positive character. So I think this group is going to enjoy it. And I'm going to put the link in the, I'm going to put the okay. link in the chat. Ar Ariel, uh, can I mention something for future, you know, maybe you to think about, I just about 30 or 40 years ago, I read a book and went through wildfire through my family called Gluckle. What's and it's now available on Amazon. I looked it up. It's uh, but Gluckle of Hamlin. Is that familiar to you? Steve, put um, it in I'm the look chat for it right now. See how it's spelled? Yeah. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to do something. What? Oh, there we go. This Memoir is the edition that Amazon has now. Oh, the wow. Memoirs of Gluckle of Hamlin. It's absolutely fascinating. She wrote, it was uh, 17th or 1690, I believe her husband died. She had about a dozen children, went into business, took his business over raised a dozen children and wrote her memoirs from okay. 1690, I think was the date. It was a can't put down, fascinating. That's so many hundreds of years ago, a Jewish woman and every, some things are so current. Mm. It's just a fascinating book to consider. I'll, I'll read it. Well, I, well I'll tell you, um, uh, Ariella and I were speaking right before we, we opened the oh, Zoom. for the last one. Yeah, because right? with the, Okay, so the next one, I think we're we're set with that one, yes, right? Okay, I just put in the chat on the Zoom. Us. I'm gonna send out an email. Please got to later tomorrow. Um, the world that we knew by Alice Hoffman. That's the book. I put the link to Amazon. Mm -hmm. The world that we knew by Alice Hoffman. It just came out in 2020. Um, yep. It's 400 pages. Fast read, slow read. Uh, she goes into detail. She's a little bit so dense. It's a yeah, little bit dense, she wrote the Dove Keepers. Yes, that so, was a. I, I love oh, that. That was good. She's, she's a yeah. really good it's option. Not like, yeah. dense, like it's not slow, but it's dense, so you don't. It's hard to read it. In yeah, minutes. I remember the Dove Keeper is very evocative. Right, right. Uh, you so, almost like want to read every word and get and get lost right. in the, like, the beauty it really of the, take you really to, takes you. Really takes you in. I haven't read this book, but I she's this is she's really good. This is in the forties, though, so you don't really want to be taken anywhere. Right, that's true. Right, but right, it's, right. it's well, the details. She really goes into the details in a very unique way. But my my point was uh, for Steve for your to your point is that the last book that we had um, uh, for this year, which was gonna be, I mean, like for June, yeah. which was uh, Like Dreamers by Yossi Klein Halevi. So I read that, that book and I don't think it's a good match for the book club. So we're, we have sorry. an opening. So we have an opening <laughs> for the an last opening. book. <laughs> which why don't we try Steve's book? It's what? She said, why don't we try Steve's Steve? yeah. My only issue is, um, I don't know how people like to read, it's not available in um, Audible or Kim. Hmm. It, 
like I can buy it in Amazon. It's used and it would arrive May 15, which is fine. I'm buying it because I'm curious and I want to mm-hmm. read it now. But I don't know how easy it's going to be to actually obtain the book. Let's not, make, let's not make a final decision now, but I do think yeah. that if, you know, what would be helpful for me, you can either, what is it? Oh, hold on one second. We're getting another recommendation from Charna. I would place in Jerusalem under Roman rule. Okay. Hold on. Can I, can, guys, time out for one second? Here's what I'll say. I think, Ariel, tell me, tell me from I think we, I think we'd be very open to taking suggestions. Yeah. Absolutely. But maybe everyone email, like email if you have like one or two or three books that you want. Yeah. yeah email yeah, them, absolutely. and because that's really how we went about this process. Email them. Either email me directly or Ariella, or if you want her email address, I can give you her email address. And then, um, and then we'll look at it. I mean, there, I don't. I, we, there's no yeah. no agenda other than getting good books and good books that um, have something a little bit um, thought provoking that we can bring here and discuss. Doesn't need to be like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, definitely open to it. to suggestions, because, especially yeah. since we do have literally an opening now. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's hard to you know, no one bats a thousand. Even Ted Williams is four hundred. You know, four out of ten. <laughs> So like, you know, we're, we're working on it, right. but yeah, no, definitely give uh, suggestions. And um, the best way to do it would be to email. Yeah. Um, and I know, I know many of you, I know Adina Malka and Charna and Steve, I know you've mentioned not even tonight, but in the past, like last yeah, few months books, books. books. but books. if I, but I, I don't know that I put it in a specific place. I would have to look. So if you can just send me again, any good stuff that you have and Eve as well, and everyone here and Sandrine mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Patty, if you guys have good books, just email them. Let's get everything. Let's get up. Let's get the list, and we're gonna look through it. Ooh, okay. she likes. I'm, I'm reading some of the reviews. Oh, looks like there was something brewing on the side. Okay. I mean, we, we we don't need to make a decision now. Let's see some. As long as they're available in Amazon or in a way that are. We want it to be broadly available. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People like to listen to the book, yeah. so Audible usually, yeah. or that you get it on Kindle. Kindle. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, it takes me a few minutes to check, but I, I can do that. Don't even worry about that. And by the way, Ariel is that. just incredible in, in vetting these things. So like she's I'll, got her um, forums and everything. I have some friends that also are in the, so I can, if I haven't read it, I'll put the name out there. Right. And try to get some perspective. So yeah, absolutely. Please. I, I like this. It's going to be, we can all vote. We can make it democratic. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Rabbi no, no, no. Solid. No, time Rabbi out. One second. One second. The reason the only hesitation <laughs> is how to get everyone to actually vote in it. Yeah. And I'm just saying logistically. Yeah. I'm not opposed. No. Trust me. I am not. I don't have, like I said before, I don't have any agenda. It's like I have secret authors that I get. To, it's like there's no, there's we zero. Get guys. Yeah, exactly. There's zero. <laughs> that's where the links to the <laughs> Amazon links. There's right, zero right, commission. Right. There's no agenda. Yeah, there's no, we're not pushing anything. Mm-hmm. This book did not present. Mm-hmm. Listen, let's be honest. Did not yeah, present good last week in a great light. Doesn't right. matter. There's no agenda. We're not hiding anything. So it's just a good book. Just good book with Jewish That's content. Really, so let's yeah, let's do Jewish it. And the good book. news is, Bar Emir Sashem, we'll have please God, we'll have many, many, many opportunities yeah, to have sounds, books. Yeah. Let's line it up. Let's let's get them lined up because we chose at the beginning of the year like eight books. Yeah, and I I realize that like if I want to read them before, sometimes I run out of books. But if someone has read them before, that's all we need. Like mm-hmm. I don't need to read them before as long as anyone Perfect. has read them. Um, I trust you guys. And anything that's that- <laughs> yeah. contemporary. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was different. Oh, right. I had one last question if I can ask. Yeah. Sure. I would like to know for the Balti Shuva, you know, getting together. Uh, I even know, you know, the some, yeah, like with the old, as you said, like, you know, I've been told, I mean, by people who move there, all neighborhood, like being together. Is it do you think is it because we choose to or because of this kind of uh, this kind of attitude towards them that they tend to marry together or it's about sugar, it's about sugar? yes yes oh. and how many generation does it take so to... i think it depends the community so there is something mentioned in the book which is like the value of your name which is almost independent of your own experience is it's like you're you, like, I don't Yichos. even know how, how you say it. And Yichos would be and like um, pedigree. Or pedigree, lineage, right. Lineage. Pedigree, or your lineage. So there is that. And even in Chabad, there is a oh. value. Like, 
it, it, oh oh hey what, what is that's a good it's so cute yeah so cute. super cute oh hey so <laughs> It's a he or her. Just bring bring your dog next time, <laughs> and everybody's gonna come in person. <laughs> but so that is in certain communities, it can go back ten generations, and it's either more or less strong. The thing mm -hmm. with Baal Teshuvas themselves is that you do want certain common experiences in life that it would potentially make your life more. Mm -hmm. um, just like you know others Instinct. experience More and insane. think, yeah. And it's not unheard of that someone is bald to shoe and the other one is not, and they marry, but Chabad, Chabad. Chabad. It may happen but very often. It happens Chabad. very often, but yeah. it's still there's something about your own self being with someone with a similar background just because you want them to understand your parents or you want them to understand yeah. experiences you had in life. That being said, Chabad ends usually, I mean, there's still families, whatever, but it usually ends with that generation. And then if your kid was born and raised in the system, in the Chabad system, it doesn't matter much that your parents got in the system. So that is, you should, but in other communities, it can go back generations and generations and generations. So it depends the community. I would not put it past a community. And I don't, I don't, I'm not from there. I don't really know from the inside out. I've not put it past from this community. I'm sure something like this, like this exists. Look, they don't present the positive. So well, what? But I'm sure some of this stuff does exist. I wouldn't put it past this type of community to be like, there's nothing to talk about. Like if you're not, if you're not from those family names, you're not going to crack into that. You're not going to yeah. marry a Kennedy. It's just not going to happen no, no, in that no. community. You're just, and you're not going to marry the Kennedys. It's, right. just, it's, just not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not happening. Right. In Chabad, it's a little bit different. First when of all, I, we didn't, even, I don't think we talked about this. To me, this was the, the theme okay. I'm remembering right now. To me, this was the theme of, I, I don't know if it's mixing communities or not, whatever, but like this community that's trying to draw people in. But once you're in, it's like, yeah, but. Right. Right, right. I did, I, do we? Because I stepped out for a minute. No, did we, we talk about that? About to that. me, right. that was like. The they, they talk right. about these. Oh, very on. Yeah, yeah, there's they, a, there's a few pages that really drills in. Being, They're trying to encourage people to become from and orthodox and move in, and it's great and take a look space. and it's wonderful. And then once you're in, it's like, yeah, but you can't marry us. Right, right. So right. it's like, well, what? <laughs> what one second. Point, right? I think Chabad does a better job, right. even though it's not perfect, and even though, but it's not. I don't think it's systemic. I think it's families. Certain families they want they want. In Yiddish, we call it Geja. Geja means like from Russia. That doesn't mean literally, but it means it's referring to like from Russia, from like the Russian the same They want the same people who were, you know, roommates in Neville back in Samarkand in these places back in the in old jail. country in jail <laughs> together. Right there, Zaydi sat in jail. They want their great great grandkids to marry each other. It, You're not going to get rid right. of that. It's just, it's just, I mean. And I, wait till the girl is 27 and he goes away. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now it's like, who's ready? Who's ready to marry? No, for sure. Listen, I, I'll just be very well, honest. I know very. But, you know, if your Steinsal to, you know, became. Oh, oh shine yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So, yeah. No, so you don't have, so that's what I'm saying. It's not a hard and fast rule. Again, I can always speak to Chabad. I don't really know this community right here. I can't say with certainty that it's the, that, that, that ceiling, right? Whatever you want to call it, glass, whatever, that ceiling is penetrable. But I know in Chabad it is. But at the same time, I also know, like, I know a story that, like, not only one, but like a story, a prominent Chabad family, like, very, very prominent. The daughter meets this guy and or they, whatever, they're introduced and this guy is like a great guy and everything and the, the family, but he was about Shuba. He was like, so, right. and the family opposed and they like didn't support it and they didn't want to go to the wedding or whatever it is. And yeah. I'm like, this happened 20 years ago, but it's like, I don't think it would happen today because uh, that family has evolved. This guy is a Chabad rabbi. It's not like this, it's not she was marrying some guy off the street. It's like this guy is a Chabad rabbi. He's a Chabad rabbi from Florida. I know the guy. And like, but they, but he didn't come from the family that they wanted her to marry. And it became a thing, but it happens in many places. Yeah, it's way less. Right, right, right. It's not only the Kennedys, it's that sort of thing. But I think that the, I think if Chabad, let's just because I don't think there's any other group or community that is as welcoming to everybody. Right. unconditionally as Chabad for Chabad to say everyone come in whoever you are whatever you're accepted 
But now you can't marry anyone would be yeah. highly problematic, also, and it wouldn't, it just wouldn't yeah, work. But there's so many people that but they're so, join the community. Yeah. Most people you're almost outnumbered. You're almost outnumbered. You're not about Shuvah at this point. Right. But right. Else, you know, like anybody who's orthodox Jewish is going to need to marry somebody who's orthodox Jewish. So that is because there's a lot of yes. Chabad that invite that people who are not orthodox. That, that would be and much that, harder, you know, but so that's you because dating, of the lifestyle. I remember my son <laughs> saying, oh my goodness, those are pretty girls. And we we're like, yeah, no, honey, keep walking. Because <laughs> yeah, we're not even that Jewish. That is harder. And, you know, <laughs> Jewish families, there but if you were lifestyle. Jewish, I could see that would be- I, really I could hard. not imagine, Pesach is coming. Like, yeah. Some like you don't care about this, but now you need to clean your house for a month. It's like <laughs> no, like it, that would be really hard to. And it happens. I have family in Israel. I think it's more likely in Israel because being Jewish is part and religious. It's almost part of the, you know, like you live yeah, with right. a calendar. You yeah, live right. with. I have a cousin. The woman is Orthodox, which I think it's easier. Whatever, the men is not. They be married happily. It's rare. We talk yeah, about no, that, yeah, and, no, and not yeah. as like gossipy. It's like, it wow, it's amazing, you know. But like, they had to make that's decisions. Not, that's not a, it's not a common. It's not a common. It's very hard. You need to make very agreements, hard. and 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 they met in a in a context where they were in the same unit in the army, you know. Otherwise, they wouldn't have crossed paths right. anywhere, you know. So it's. It's not that easy. I feel for the Chabad family to put themselves out there into the community and welcome people mm -hmm. who are light Jew, Jewish, the Jewbies. I think. But I, I don't think the or... family that goes into an environment that is different mm -hmm. needs yes. to change right. who you are but in order to. You know, still are growing and mm -hmm. learning and whatever. Right. And um, I, I don't think that's. Influences and the road talks about it. an influence is not a negative thing. No, no. It's how you either transform it or, mm -hmm. you know, how you interact with the influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. yeah. I, I I just think this yeah. is such a good topic. That's why I like really enjoy this book. I know. Because like yes. the book itself, okay, you know, right, like, I right. could I could find it's the issue. The but like it's what it what this brings up. I don't think we even got into the Sharchan, how Sharchan worked. Right. Really? Because yeah, we have like the matchmakers. Yeah. Wow. What's the role of a matchmaker? I mean, we could start from the beginning. Like, what's the role of a matchmaker to begin with? Right? Why do you need a matchmaker? Yeah. A matchmaker is actually from a very pure place. Yes. The idea is that it would be immodest and it would be it would be uncomfortable for young men and women to be dating and flirting and breaking each other's hearts and whatever. So you have a neutral third party that does the introductions, that puts together the dates and the two people go out and meet each other. And, and, and I mean, theoretically, it's a great idea, mm -hmm. but then you're giving away the keys to a thing. And then like, if somebody meets not through a shotgun, oh, it's a scandal because how did they meet? Oh, did they meet somewhere inappropriate? Were they flirting and they weren't, you know, being modest and whatever it is. And it's just an interesting, it's a very compelling. Right. So even if you find someone, I think the book did do a good job with this. It's like, you find someone from a different yes. reason, yes. like even, hey, Rabbi Solish went to yeshiva with someone and his roommate, he wants to recommend it to a sister. It would go through the shatchan. Even I, though you made the I want to tell you, can I tell you a personal story? <laughs> My wife and I, okay. I, I just, I, how did we meet? I'm sure you're all wondering now because I'm literally raising this as a thing. Here's the story. I worked upstairs in 770. 770 is the main synagogue, Chabad HQ. I was in publishing. I see a lot of books a here that books, I, I see yeah. a, lot, a lot of books in the shelf yeah, that I worked on, with my name in it. I was the managing editor of the Chabad publisher at a very young age of the English department. And, um, and I worked, I had an office upstairs in headquarters. And a young lady named Leah Kesselman was um, the secretary, one of the secretaries of Rabbi Krinsky, who's like the head Chabad rabbi in headquarters. Mm -hmm. And that was the main office. If anybody called in, it went through that office. And if we needed anything, like that was the main, the main office. In my office, there were two single guys. You and one more? Or Me and one more. Okay. No, there were three guys, okay. but there were two of us that were, um, two of us that were, um, 
That's really a calling. Okay, how <laughs> ironic. She so felt just, it. she felt it. I'm gonna keep this very quick because I'm, maybe she, uh, we got some video footage on that. It was taken from the vehicle. So now we have to figure out where it went. Anyway, follow, please. okay, not to make stories. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, okay. So, so, so there's a guy, three guys in my office. One was one was married, but two of us were single. There were Leah and another girl were single. So two single guys, two single girls. A few months into whatever year it was, out of nowhere, the, my the friend, the other guy in the office, and one of the girls were there gets engaged. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, I didn't even know you were dating. What this happened? <laughs> anyway, got engaged. The whole deal. Anyway, a few months after that, a friend of mine who is mutual friend and relatives or whatever it is came over to me and he's like, would you consider going? Cause he, him and his wife, he knew me and his wife right, knew Leah. Yeah, so he's like, like, Hey, yeah, you know, what would you go out with uh, Leah? Like I'm someone like, that actually I'm like you. yeah, but like, if it doesn't work out, is it awkward? Cause we work here the same thing. He's like, yeah, whatever. so and I was thinking about it. And then, um, I mean, I thought it was a great idea. It was just like one hesitation, like maybe it would be comfortable. Like, yeah, it was, and, but it went through a shadchan after that. Like, right, even though it came from a friend, but it went right, formally right, through a shadchan. Right, right, right who officially like gave us each other's numbers and then we called and it's like, oh, hey. And like, we just went through a formal route. And, and one of the reasons for that is for safety. Right. I don't mean like physical safety, I mean for- Your reputation. Not even that. I would say for just comfort. Like if it doesn't work out, you don't have to call that person and say, I don't want to go out again. Right. You just tell the shadchan, it's not for me. Yeah. And, you're that. <laughs> and you're done. And you're done. You're saying why that. that's a good thing? <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's, you don't have to text. You don't have to call. You don't have to, and you're saying, well, it sounds like you're just trying to avoid it, but you know what? You grow from those experiences. All right. You grow from a lot of things. You grow from a herring. I'm saying like, I don't know if you need that to, I won't get there. Listen, yet. it's fine. I'm just saying there is a, there is a comfort in a safety and I can go out and I could not like it. And I don't need to feel any pressure. And I can just call and say, not for me. either side. Yeah. And it's done. And most, not most, but many are originated by mutual friends or mutual. Yeah, yeah. nowadays most. Nowadays, yeah. Yeah. and it can go through a shabchan, but like yeah. not many people yeah. sit on the shabchan. It's like give me names, like <laughs> it's not mutual us. friends or siblings. Sibling, that, right, people, like you go to yeshiva, you know, hundred, right, two hundred you know, guys, and they have the same everyone age, is friends. You know, the yeah. same age. Um, older brothers take care of their younger. You might still want a shotgun to like be able to facilitate <laughs> things, or to to just find some secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, if any more questions come up, just let us know. But um, thank you.